Okay, so in today's video, what we're going to look at is how to budget as a beginner. So this can be really difficult if you've never done this before and you don't really know where to start. So do not worry, I'm going to show you step by step what you can do to start a budget as a beginner. And you don't need to know how to use fancy tools or we're not going to introduce a system or tool that you're going to be using. This can simply be done on a piece of paper or it can be done in Excel preferably. So let's get started. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to log into your online banking and then you're going to download the last six months worth of statements in CSV or Excel format because that's going to help you with this process and it's also sort of easier in a way to do this through Excel because you can chop and change and filter on things. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a minute just to do that and then let's move on to step number two. Okay, so now that we've got our Excel statements what we're going to do is we're going to add in a column. So first thing we want to do is insert a column next to description. So before we've got our totals and in there, we want to call that type. Now, if you don't know how to insert a column, I will show you how to do that really quickly in Excel in just a moment. But again, we want to be doing that just after description. And this is going to enable us to go ahead and categorize that expenditure. So we want to go ahead and insert a column for type before our income and expenditure. So we're going to click on the column that we want to insert next to, and it's going to insert on the left of this. So we want to put it between B and C. Well, so we're going to go ahead and click on C. Right click, insert, simple as that. Okay, now step number four is where we're going to go ahead and filter on any expenditure that we've made. So we're going to create a filter in Excel. And again, if you don't know how to do that, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But we want to filter on expenditure only at this moment in time. We don't want to look at income. So expenditure only. And usually with these statements, they're categorized into one column for income, one column for expenditure. And if you're not sure which one's which, have a look at the description or have a look at the balance because again, usually these statements have got balance as bad aside. And if you can see for that row item that the balance is going down, then you want to filter on that column where the expenditure is. Okay, so here we've got an example bank statement. Now, in order to filter on this information, it's really easy. So if we've got this on home, if I go ahead and use the left click of my mouse and select column D and go all the way across like that and then lift off, go to data and then here under sort and filter, we've got filter. So we've created a filter and we can click off it, it's fine. But what we can do now is we can select income like this, that doesn't need to be there. Or we can filter on expenditure, just like that. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the zeros because again, this is just a template, um, just so we can filter properly. So that's how to filter, really, really simple. You can take this off by just hitting filter. So drag, filter, there you go. In today's economy, there's going to be costs that you're incurring that you're going to have to pay monthly. And these are going to be things that you're committed to. So the likes of a mortgage, a loan, maybe a car loan, for example, um, maybe credit card expenditure, or it could be gas utilities, um, consumables, for example, you know, your weekly shop, you can't not um, continue to pay for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look through all of our costs for committed costs. So I want you to go ahead and have a look down every single one of your expenditure items. Maybe start with a couple. So if you search on, for example, your mortgage payments or your rent payments, search on those first and in the column type, write committed. So you can write committed costs or just committed, it's fine. But we're gonna do that one by one. So again, some other examples of this are going to be where you've got a mobile phone contract that again, you're committed to until a certain point in time, or it could be, as I say, credit card payments that you're committed to, so where you're paying like hundred pound a month or something like that. So anything that you're committed to, you want to put committed costs next to it. So go ahead and do that now and I'll show you an example on the Excel sheet. So next we're gonna go ahead and filter on expenditure and we don't want blanks or zeros. And we're gonna go down these one by one and say, is that committed or not committed? Insurance payment, I'm pretty sure would be a committed expense. Amazon purchase, I wouldn't think that was a committed expense. Water bill, yes. Tax, that wouldn't be a tax refund though, would it? So let's get rid of that. Again, this is just an auto-generated statement. 
Um, cash withdrawal, uncommitted. Dining out, uncommitted. Loan repayment, it would be most likely be committed. Gym membership, probably committed. Water bill, yes, mortgage payment. Gym, keep going down. Fuel would be committed. Water bill, yes, internet bill. Credit card payment, yes. It's a hell of a credit card payment. Um, then we've got bank fee, yep. Tax again, yep. Um, bonus, that's probably actually going to be an income item. So again, this is an auto-generated statement. So let's just get rid of that. Car payment, committed. Insurance, committed. Loan, committed. Electricity, committed. Loan, and, and we could obviously go down and filter on these items, but uh, mortgage, water, medical, bill, pets, consultation fee, rent, that's not rent received, is it? Rent would be committed, water bill, car payment, car payment. Okay, now, now that we've gone ahead and highlighted everything that we're committed to, that again, we cannot get out of or in a contract or it's something that we just have to pay for every month because for example it's the consumables where we're getting our weekly shop now what we want to do is go ahead and go for our expenditure and highlight things that maybe we might be able to cut back on so these sort of expenditure items are things like you know cost of coffee starbucks kfc mcdonald's um any additional costs you know the cost of going to a restaurant etc um Things that you sort of, uh, I'd sort of label these as sort of treat items, if you will. So again, things that you have splashed the cash on, if you want to go that far, that maybe that money could have been used better elsewhere. So again, we don't want to cut back on everything. I don't think that's sustainable at all, but let's at least label these so that we can see what we're spending our additional money on um, that we've got. So go ahead and do that now, and I'll show you as I'm doing this on the Excel spreadsheet in just a moment. So I'll see you at the next step. So let's see what we've got left. If I filter on blanks here. So of these items, they're probably not going to be committed. So I'm just going to write uncommitted next to each one of these. Da -da. Yeah, like that. Okay. So that's with everything filtered on expenditure type. Now, I get asked this question a lot as to why I simplify this process into those committed costs and non-committed costs, essentially. And the reason for that is because you could do this a different way and you could label costs as fixed or variable, etc. But it's not going to get down to the nitty gritty, which is us being able to go ahead and create a budget on the back of what we're spending right now and any potential areas that we can cut back on. So I just try and keep this really simple, definitely for the first time that you're doing a budget. So there's a really, really easy way that we can go ahead and budget for next month. And that would be to go ahead and take an average of everything that we spent money on in the last six months. So what we can do is create a pivot table of the back of the information that we've got in order to create this. The other way that we can do this budget, which would be a little bit more time consuming, is where we go down line by line and add in all of those committed costs first in our budget and then underneath all of the non-committed costs and what we can do from that is line by line go through and say okay well can we cut back on certain items in this budget in order to give us a little bit more free flowing cash for example so there's two different ways but i think it'd just be easy to do the pivot table first and then once we decide okay well you know i don't want to spend that much on this we can highlight that in a little bit more of an easier fashion. So let's go and see what that looks like on the Excel spreadsheet. So what we want to do next is create another tab that's going to be called budget. And this is where we're going to go ahead and create a budget on the back of a pivot table. So in order to create a pivot table, if you don't know, you need to have column headings or spit out some error to say, oh, you don't have column headings. So we're going to drag from E to A, again, using the left click of our mouse. We're going to go to insert, then pivot table at the top, go to existing worksheet, click on OK. OK, so then we get pivot table. So what we want is a description by the side, and then we want expenditure, 
and then income. Now this has given us everything that we have paid for and everything that we have received, but we want the date also. So if I drag date down into column, that's given me that month by month, which is exactly what we want. Now the sum items here, um, let's just click off um, income for a second. There we go, to get our expenditure. So what we can do with this is we can literally use our laugh mouse again to drag over all of this, right click to copy, and then right click paste special values only. So that second one where it says one, two, three. Okay, and then we're gonna clean this up by just getting rid of that column there. So that has given us all of the expenditure by date, which is great, but what it hasn't given us is those that are committed expenditure and those that are non-committed. So we can actually change that really quickly. So if we delete this and go up, then what we can say is we also want um, type in here. So I want it to filter on type first before description and that there is a little bit easier for us. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, paste special values underneath like that. Look, so we've got our committed total costs up here and we can do a little, make it a little bit fancier like that. And then we've got our uncommitted costs. So we can see really clearly what we're spending money on. Um, in order to just simply copy and paste a format, if you don't already know, you can select it again using the left click of a button. And then at the top, go to Format Painter, like that. Except you want to make sure that you actually do it on the line <laughs> that you need to. Oh, there we go. Okay. And we can change this to Totals by clicking on the total sum at the top, drag that along, and do the same thing down here. Now you could have this table however you would like to have it. Um, completely up to you. This is just a really quick, rough and ready way of creating a budget. So now that we've got that together for the expenditure side, what we're going to look at now is the income side of things. So your income for the majority of people is going to be your employment income or it could be pension income or it could be savings income etc. But what we want to do is filter on our original table for income items and we're just going to add that into the budget in as many different lines as we need to. So this could be a different line item for each different revenue source. So you could have one line item that says employment, one that says bank interest, one that says pension income for example. So I'll show you how to do that now. What we want next at the top here is income. So I'm just going to change this table and I'm going to get rid of expenditure and instead I'm going to have income. So we've got two lines for income here which is bonus and salary. So we'll pop those in there, we'll call that total income. And then just do a total of those two items there. We can go through and start highlighting items that we can cut back on. So again, these are things that are not necessary for you to spend money on, but that you have spent money on in the past six months where you could potentially cut back and give yourself that additional cash flow. And I always think it's always good to have that rainy day budget if you can. Again, it's not always possible for everybody. Completely appreciate that and definitely not in the current economy that we live in. But it's always great to have that rainy day fund if you possibly can. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. This individual is definitely not receiving income on a regular basis, it seems. But again, this is just the template, just an example template. Um, so we can see there this individual's income the committed costs uncommitted and what I would do is I would go through all of these uncommitted costs and I would look at where expenditure um, being spent essentially so clearly these are very extortionate figures also but we've got dining out there so they've spent 7,740 on dining out we can definitely avoid that by 
cooking indoors at home and buying our own food which would be a lot cheaper clothing yes and no because sometimes clothing is necessary for example if you've got um, children starting school in september they might need a new uniform so possibly but i'm not going to highlight that this time charity donation if you are trying to cut back on costs you might want to decide not to do that until you're able to provide that again what else have we got here a bank fee that might have been because the individual has gone over the overdraft for example so bank fees are a funny one because sometimes they are fixed and other times you'll get a bank fee for going overdrawn for example so that is avoidable in that circumstance but you'd have to look at that on a case by case basis so i'm going to say yes we need to be better with our money there amazon purchases 1643 pounds of amazon what are they buying <laughs> but that could be avoidable. So that would be looked into. And I don't know what the consultation fees are, but again, they might be something that this individual can't get all, um, can't get out of and they need to make those payments. Or it could be that there is something that they can cut costs on there. But this is simply it. You just go through, highlight the things that are non-committed and see if there's any way, anywhere that you can go ahead and cut back on. Now, as I say, in order to make a budget for the next month, what we can do is if we just copy this column here, next month, if we want to do an average of the last so many months, in this case we've got 12 months, so we do an average of the last 12 months, um, what we can do is just go equals and that, no, we can do the sum of all of this and we can divide that by 12. And we're dividing by 12 because we've got 12 months in this case. But if you've got six months, you can take the total cost for the last six months and divide by six. And that's going to give you an average each month. So we can just drag this down, see what we're left with, and then also use that just to do a bit of a format. There we go. So that's now given an average budget for next month. So that's, again, it's just one way that you can do this for simplicity. Um, or you can go through line by line by line and have a look at the costs that are happening every month or the costs that you expect for next month based on new information that you've got or new contracts etc that you've signed up to but thank you very much for watching it to the end of this video and i really hope it helped you uh, as always stay tuned ask questions in the comments if you've got any and i'll catch you on the next one